Hello and welcome to my episode of how to make the view cube in Bevy. This is a condensed video of the like three hour live stream I did implementing this functionality. So basically it boils down to on Reddit, someone was asking for an example of how to do a view cube and I left a comment saying how I would go about doing it. And then when I got home, did a live stream going into more detail about the actual implementation. So the video you see in the background is just sort of a condensed cut down version of the live stream. And then I'm just gonna do a bit of a voiceover explaining like uh, more concise steps without necessarily uh, my thought process of implementing this code. So there's a lot that goes into the um, view cube. So I use mouse clicking in order to be able to um, select each individual section of the cube. It's made up of 27 smaller cubes or like cuboids that when cl clipped together become the greater cube. And then I also added glowing onto it so that when you select certain pieces, they would glow. And that uses the uh, bevy mod uh, outline, I believe it's called. I can't quite read the text on the screen. Um, so after I set up everything, I jumped into an empty folder and just started initializing all my Rust code. Once I had my empty Rust folder, I included Bevy as a dependency and then copied across the um, All Dependencies Optimization 3 um, hack that a lot of people use with Bevy just to speed up the code once it's been compiled the first time at a sacrifice of a slightly slower first time compile. Uh, once all that's set up, I jump into just setting up basic Bevy systems, you know, the, um, getting a camera, pointing it at spawn, um, and then also setting up a system that'll spawn all of our cube and everything. So, you know, a lot of basic stuff. Uh, also including like the default systems and all that sort of interesting stuff that every basic Bevy setup needs. This was predominantly done early in the stream to allow for the slower first time compile of Bevy while I generated the assets. So, once I had the basic Bevy setup running, I went over into GIMP and started making all the panels. I already had up set up before the start of the stream a white square with all the text, so I was just sort of showing people exporting them and putting them into the correct file so that I could later load them into the game and access all the required um, faces. So it just meant that the top of the cube had a top and the bottom of the cube had bottom written on it. Uh, this did have a little bit of issues, being that they're just sprites. The fact that it says top means that you can actually like spin all the way around the cube and then top will be written upside down simply because you're looking at the cube from the wrong side. The next step was to create an enum with 27 values representing each possible face that was selected or could be selected. So you had you know top, bottom, left, right. Then you had each joining face, so the top to the left and the bottom to the um, right, and then each corner. So you had the top, left, right corner. So in total... That comes to 27 because it's there's the nine top faces, the nine middle faces, and the nine bottom faces. And then each of these was spawned as its own entity with that corresponding enum attached to it so that when I did the click detection, I knew which face you had clicked on and could set the cube into the correct orientation. Uh, from then, I would spawn the cube and insert everything it needed in order to function. So your PBR bundle with its mesh and texture so that you had the correct looking square. After that, it was simply just to uh, tweak and position them, which was a majority of the stream was spent tweaking and positioning the cube so that the top cube was in the right spot and meshed seamlessly with the left and the right and the all the corners. This um, wasn't particularly hard. It was just a lot of copy-paste code because uh, I was using scaling rather than individual meshes in order to get the correct size. So that meant spawning a one-by-one -one cube mesh and then scaling it on the axes that was correct for that particular cube, um, and then putting it in the correct position by offsetting its transform. Then, you know, so the top cube was plus 0.4, and the bottom cube was minus 0.4 or 0.45. So it was just a lot of tweaking. So at first I spawned just the top and the bottom, made sure they were right. Some things like the bottom needed to be scaled by negative one or negative 0.1 in a certain dimension in order to flip the text back the right way around. Uh, then 
after I had all the cubes spawned in and in the correct positions, I moved on to uh, adding the clicking code so that when you clicked the correct uh, face, it would rotate. I never actually finished implementing this in the end of the stream. And I mean, I still haven't implemented it now, like a month later. But that's more to do with the fact that it's uh, quite complicated logic and it's just outside of um, my mental capacity at the moment of doing the geometry of. So what you need to do is rotate the cube so that you're looking at it so that the correct face is the right way up. And that's what I was struggling with a lot of is that because of your order at which you imply rotations, it was possible to end up upside down or looking at something backwards. Um, so along one axis, I think was fine, like the rotating left to right sort of axis. But as soon as you pass the 180 degree mark, so looking from the front to going to looking from the bottom, you need to like flip things, otherwise they're upside down. So my suggestion in the video, so my suggestion in the live stream was more or less to render the text with shaders would probably be a better approach because then the shader can look at like the up axes for the camera and then render the text so that it's always the right way up even if you're actually looking at the cube upside down but that's all there really was to it there was some interesting logic about how um you select each cube was using mouse clicking and you know just uh querying through every object that had a view cube enum and the mouse click interaction changing there are still a few things that i would like to expand upon in the um crate that i didn't get to touch on the live stream like making the cube fixed in the corner of the camera and rotating with the camera's motion so if the player was to have some kind of other way of rotating the screen beyond just clicking on the cube like you usually can in these sorts of CAD programs, then I would want the cube to follow along. Plus, I also want the cube, so if the player moves their rotation, to always stay in the top right corner. Um, if people want to make pull requests onto the actual repository and make this into a functional crate, that would be hugely appreciated. Um, thank you for making it to the end of the video, and I like, comment, subscribe would be much appreciated. And... Uh, you can find a link to my Patreon description in the description and you'll also find while you're down there the GitHub code and a link to the actual live stream that I was doing. But thank you and I will see you in the next one.